Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create this amazing snake game. As you can see, we have to move around to collect these donuts. Uh, this one will be a little bit harder, no problem. So there you go. We are basically increasing the length of the snake as we move along. And the finger is basically the head of the snake. And we are able to collect these donuts. You can see the score keeps increasing at the top. And if we hit, the game ends. And if we bring it back, we have the option to press R and it will restart the game and we, get, we can start playing that again as well. So we will discuss in detail how this is done and uh, I have a few images as well here for some better explanation. We will look at how the snake works, uh, how can we move it and how exactly do we reduce the length and how we check for collusion. All of this will be shared within our video. We will go step by step so that you understand what is happening and we will write the code from scratch as well. So we are going to use a custom class that we will uh, call snake game class. You will also learn about object oriented programming as well. So it will be a lot of fun so stay tuned. This video is sponsored by NVIDIA who are hosting the world's number one AI conference from 21st to 23rd of March 2022. This GTC conference includes various topics such as autonomous vehicles, computer vision, accelerated computing, and much more. This is a great opportunity to learn from the world's brightest minds, connect with experts, network with your peers, and discover the technological advancements that are making it possible to take on the world's greatest challenges. And let me tell you why it's a bad idea to miss this out. Here are some stats of the previous GTC conference. There were over 200,000 registrations with 12 of the 12 top IT companies attending as well. And not only that, 18 of the top 20 car manufacturers were also in attendance. And the keynote views were more than 14 million. And not only will you gain knowledge, being my subscriber you will get an exclusive chance to win the latest 3080 Ti graphics card. All those who register and attend will automatically get in the draw. You can find the link in the description to get registered for free. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses that are available on our CVZone platform. Links are in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we begin, let's have a look at the concept. So here we have our snake game using computer vision. And you can see that this is the type of snake that we are going to build and it will consist of lines and points. So the green dots are basically our points and the line is the red one that is indicated here. So we will have the head which is the north direction of the snake. So this will be a little bit bigger so that we can see this is the head. And then there will be also a point called as the previous head which was the previous point where the head was. And then the distance between each of these points, we are going to note down that as well. So at the end of the day, we will have a list of points. So these points will be these green dots. So it will have the X and Y position of all these green dots. Then we will have a list of distances. So the distance from the head till the previous head then from here till the next point, from here till the next one, and till the end. So we will have distances for each one of these. But why do we need the distance? The distance is there so that we know how long our snake is. And whenever it eats something, we will add to the length. And whenever it is moving, we will keep the length same. So I will show you what that means later on. So then we will have another variable called the current length. That will be the total distances that when we add them up. So distance one, distance two, three, and four. And the total length will be the value that is allowed for the snake to be at the maximum. So this is basically a threshold. Again, I will explain this now in more details. So let's move on to the next slide. So here you can see that when we move our finger, it basically creates a new point. And then the distance between that point and the previous point, we are going to calculate and we are going to draw that line. But the problem here is that when you add this new length, the total length of the snake changes. So we are adding another uh, length plus 
that length might be bigger than what we had earlier. So we cannot just remove one from here. So what we have to do is we have to calculate this distance as well. And then based on that, we will remove a few of the, uh, what do you call, lengths at the back. So let's have a look at that. So we will call this length reduction. So let's say the total length of our snake, this is our snake, and this is the new position. So the total length after the new position is 190. And just, just a number, basically it's add, it adds up this one distance, two, three, four, five, six. So the addition of these six distances is 190. But the allowed length is 175. So right now the snake should be 175. So what we can do is, so you can see this length here is basically half of this. So this is half of this. So what we can do is we can remove both of these. Now it won't be 175, but it will be less than 175, but it should not be more than 175. So this is the basic idea. So here after the reduction, you can see the, the length is 167. We have removed two of these, but it is not more than 175. So this, uh, this scenario is not perfect. So the length will change a little bit here and there, but it won't be that visible. Then for the collusion, we, when we have to end the game is when the head collides with the body. So to do that, what we will do is we will take the point of the head and we will calculate the distances uh, from all these different points. We will compute distances between head and each point. And if any one of those is lower than a threshold, then we will say that the collusion is detected. So all of these things, it might be a little bit overwhelming, but what we will do is we will go step by step and I will explain within the code how exactly this works out. So here we are in our PyCharm project and the first thing we'll do, we'll go to file, settings, and we will add our interpreter. So we'll go to Python interpreter and we are going to add. So you can see we don't have any over here. So we will go to add and then we will uh, use the existing environment and we will hit OK. And here we are going to install a few libraries. So the first one will be CV zone. So this will allow us to work with OpenCV and it will also allow us to work with media pipe. So, but we do need to install media pipe, media pipe. And what else? So yeah, that's pretty much it. And uh, the CV zone package will also install the NumPy, uh, which we will be needing as well. So that is good. So now that this is done, we will go to our file uh, folder and we will create new file. Let's just call it main. And we are going to create our game over here. So the first thing we can do is we can import uh, our packages. So we are going to import CV zone. We are going to import uh, CV2 and we will also import NumPy, NumPy as NP. So, so far we need these three and then later on we can add to it. So the first thing we will do is we will start our webcam. So let's write down here cap equals, uh, actually uh, let's bring in the file as well. So we have a file and you can download this from our website. So all you have to do is you have to uh, create an account, register, and you can download all of this for free. So this is a donut.png. It's a very small file, 75 by 75 pixels. That's why it's a little bit blurred at this point. So you can download this. We have just pasted it in the main folder. So it's right here. So now what we can do is we can create our webcam object. So we'll write here CV2 video capture and we will give in the camera number. So I'm using a lot of cameras. So right now this is camera number three. So I have to write ID number two. So then we are going to give it, um, we are going to give it the height and the width. So the width prop ID number is three and uh, we are going to give it the value of one, two, eight, zero. And, um, uh, we are going to give the height as 720. Now, the reason we are doing this is because if you use the default values of 640 by 480, you don't have a lot of room to play around with. So you, you can do that too, but uh, this will give you uh, a bigger space to play around with. So 
So the next thing is to run the webcam. So we will write while true and we will write that the success, which is a Boolean and the image equals cap dot read. We are going to read these values and then we will simply show cv2 dot im show and we are going to write image and then we will write img and then we will write cv2 dot wait key and we will give one millisecond delay. So this is pretty much standard. So let's go ahead and run that. So there you go. So now you can see me, the webcam is working fine. So let's go ahead and create our project. So the next thing we will do is to add our hand tracking module. So we will write here from, from uh, cvzone dot hand tracking module imports hand detector and this will allow us to use the media pipe package easily so that we don't have to write uh, a lot of code okay so we will create an object here and we will call it detector and that will be our hand detector and we will say that the detection confidence should be let's say 0 0.8 and by default it's 0 0.5 so we want it a little bit higher and the maximum number of hands we want are one. So we don't want to use two hands, otherwise it will just confuse the game. So then we are going to put this in the loop that we want to detect the hand on each frame. So here we are going to write that detector dot find hands and we want to find it in our image and we want you to return the total number of hands and the image as well. So that is good. So let's run that and hopefully it will give us the hand with all the landmarks so that we can use the index point uh, to actually move around and see our detections. There you go. So this is our right hand. But the problem here is that the right is not right, the left is not left. So it's opposite. So what we can do is we can flip. So here we will write image equals cv2.flip and we are going to flip our image in the direction one, the axis one. So you can do it in axis zero, but that will be vertical. This is horizontal, which is axis one. So now it will be easier for me to play the game because when I move to the right, uh, the image, uh, my hand in the image will also move to the right. Otherwise it will be the opposite. So here, now it's easier for me, but you can see it says here left, which is wrong. This is my right hand. So we can fix that too. Uh, there is an option here of flip type is equals to false. And hopefully this will solve that issue. There you go. So now it shows right hand. So this is good. Now the next step, what we will do is we will find this hand and we will find the point for it. So the index point. So we will write here if hands, if there is something in hands, then we are going to find the first hand. So normally it will give us multiple hands, but because we requested only one, so we know that we will get the first one. So what exactly do we need? We need the landmark point of the index finger. So what we are trying to get is this point. So you see this green dot. This is our point that we are trying to find on our index finger. So once we have that location, uh, we can start creating our snake. So here we are going to write that our landmark list equals to hands at zero. So this will be our first hand and we want to get the landmark list of this hand. So this is basically a dictionary and inside that dictionary we have this value lm list so it will give us a list of all these points now which of these points is our relevant point for the index it's point number eight so we are going to get the point number eight so we will write here that the point for index equals lm list at number eight 
Now LM list at number eight will give us three values, X, Y, and Z. So we don't want the Z. So we are not dealing with 3D, uh, three dimensions here. We only need two. So what we can do is we can write here that we want from zero till two. So two will not be inclusive. So it will be zero and one. So this is how we can write this. So point index. So what we can do is to check if we are heading in the right direction, we can actually draw this. So we can write here cv2.circle and we will put it on our image. And then the center will be our points uh, index. And then we will give in the radius. Let's say the radius is uh, 20 and the color is purple, 200, 0 and 200. And the thickness is cv2 dot filled. So we want it all the way filled. So let's run that. And this should give us uh, the point index whenever the hand is there. If the hand is not detected, it will not show us anything. So this is uh, why we wrote that if hands. So right now you can see there is a big dot over here. And this means that we are heading in the right direction. We are uh, getting the right points. So that is good. Now the next step is to now create our actual game. So we are going to create a game based on a class. So we will create a class and within that class, we will have everything related to the game. Now you might ask, why do we need to do this? The reason is uh, the game has a lot of moving parts, a uh, lot of different uh, variables that are connected to each other, that are based on each other. So uh, if you create functions, you will have to pass on the information each time to the new function. So it will be a little bit harder. If it's a class, then it already has all that information. It just need to access it. So it will be much easier to do it with a class rather than uh, with our uh, uh, functional programming. So let's go ahead and create our class. So we will go down here and we will write class and we will write snake game class, let's say, uh, because uh, we have the name of the project as well, snake game. So let's not confuse it. Let's just write snake game class. Okay, so we, we will just create our initial function. So we will write here uh, underscore init. And what we have to do um, later on, we will see if we need to give any parameters to run it. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and look at our initial slide. This is the one that we started off with. So here you can see that for the snake game using computer vision, we need list of points. We need list of distances. We need the current length and we need the total length. So these are the four things that we need right away. And uh, we also need the head point and the previous head point. So all of these things we are going to add um, to our initialization. So the first thing will be self.points. So this will be a list. And uh, it will be a list of all points of the snake. Then we will have the lengths. So we will write here self dot L E N G T H S equals empty. And this will be a distance between each point. So these are the two things. And then the next one was our current length. So self dot current length. Equals zero. So this is total length of the snake. Snake. So this is the current length, and uh, then we will also need the previous head. Uh, we also need the total length. So let's write the total length first. So total, or let's call it something else. Let's call it allowed, allowed, because it's more clear what we are doing. 
the allowed length is basically a fixed value, let's say 150 in our case. So it will start with 150. And then whenever we add, uh, whenever we eat the food, it will increase the length. So this will be total allowed, allowed length. Okay. And uh, what else do we need? We need the previous head self dot previous previous head equals uh, zero zero at this point we don't have any values so this is pretty self-explanatory previous head point and then we will need uh, we will need score and all these different things but we can do that later on Right now we'll go step by step. So we will do only the parts that are um, important at this point. So then we need a function for, or you can say a method for updating. So each time we will update and we will need, we will need our image. So let's call it image main. And then we will need the head current. So this will be the current head. So this is the previous head. This is the current head. Uh, let's write current before current head. Okay. So once we have that, we are going to uh, display our points. We have to display all the points and we have to start putting them in our appropriate uh, what do you call lists? So for example, if you are getting the current head, we need to put that in points. Then we need to check the distance between the current head and the previous head, and we need to put that in the lens. Then we need to update the current length that this is the total length of our snake. So all these things we have to do. So let's just uh, do it here. So the first thing we will do, we are going to break down the head previous and the current head into x and y so we can write here that the previous x and the previous y equals self dot um, this is the previous head and the current x and the current y equals uh, current head so we are not writing self with this because we are directly getting it from the update so we're not getting it from here, that's why. Okay, once we have that, then we can find the distance uh, between the previous and the current head points. So, or let's just uh, append the values first. So let's append self dot points dot append. And then we are going to append our current head point. So we will append the CX and CY. So, then we need to append the distance. So to append the distance for the length, we need to find the distance first. So to find the distance, we can write here distance equals, uh, we can use math, math dot uh, hypotenuse. And then we can give in CX minus PX and then CY minus by now you can use simple mathematics as well but uh, using this method it's a little bit easier to find you can find the distance in one line so this is the distance and once we have that we are going to append it so we will write here self dot uh, length dot append and then we are going to append our distance once we append the distance then we are going to add it to our total length. Uh, sorry, the current length. So self dot uh, current length plus equals our distance. So before if it was, let's say 100 and the new length is 50. So now it will become 150. Then we need to update our previous head. So we will write here self dot uh, previous head is basically the current head and the current y so this is for the next iteration so the next time it comes here uh, it will have these values 
and then it will calculate all of this again. So right now we have started putting the values in our list and what we have to do is we have to now draw the snake to see if we are heading in the right direction. So here we are going to write draw snake and then we are going to write here four points in self self dot points we are going to go through all the points now uh, because we are drawing the lines we cannot draw uh, the first one because it does not have a previous value so we have to make sure we don't use that so we will write here if i if i is not equals to zero then you do this but there is no i at this point because we don't have the iteration number so we can write here i and we can write here enumerate and this will give us the iteration number and then we will see if it's not equals to zero if it's more than uh, zero then we will write cv2 dot line and then we are going to draw it on our main image and we will write here self dot points at i minus one so this will be our first point and the second point will be simply the current point at which we are or you can simply write i if that is confusing you can just write here i so this will be i minus one this will be i so these are the two points where we want to draw the line and then uh, we just have to give in the color so let's give it 255 here and then let's give it thickness of 20. So this is the idea. Let's uh, and th these are all the all the lines. So they will be red. And what we can do is uh, we can draw that circle. So let's not draw it here. Let's draw it over here. And uh, because we are drawing the snake, so let's just put it all together. And this point index uh, basically is the last point. So self dot points at minus one. So minus one means the last point. So that is the point of our head and uh, we can give it a different color or we can make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller or something like that. So for now, let's just keep it uh, a little bit different color and that's it. And here in the hands, we are going to update our function, uh, update our method. So first of all, we need to create our game so we will write here that our game equals snake game class and there's nothing to uh, send in and then here we will say that game dot update and we will give in our image and we will give in the current head position which is the point index and it will return us something so the update function should return us the update image so here we will say return, oh, what happened there? Return image main. What happened? Why doesn't it show image main? Yeah. Okay, it should be pushed in. Okay, image uh, main and we need to draw here as well on image main. So if we go here and we just write image equals this, so that will give us the updated image. So let's go ahead and see what happens right now it will keep drawing the snake whenever we move our finger it will keep adding new values but it will not do the reductions so the reductions we are going to look at later on so here you can see the snake is getting bigger and bigger you can see uh, nothing is happening uh, apart from um, creating new points so it keeps adding those points now the next step is the reduction so we need to reduce the points so here you can see this is the part we have done we are creating new points and it is adding new length now the next step is length reduction so here we are going to reduce that value so we will check what is the allowed length and if it has exceeded we are going to reduce the previous ones so let's go ahead and do that 
So we will go here and before we draw, we are going to write here length reduction. So in the length reduction, we are going to write if self dot current length is greater than the self dot allowed length. So the allowed length is let's say 150 that we mentioned here. But the current length of the snake is let's say 200. So now we need to reduce it. So now we will go through all the lengths instead of the points. We will go through all the different lengths and we will reduce one of those. So here, if you see, uh, we need to, in this case, we need to reduce this one and we need to reduce this one. So we will remove these two. So we will go through these and we will keep reducing. So we will write here for i because we need the iteration number. So we are writing i as well. And we will write here length, uh, length, and then we will write in enumerate and we will write here self dot length. So we are getting all the lengths within our self dot length and each one of them we are going to check. So first we are going to reduce self dot current length minus minus equal the length. So we will reduce one of them and we will check again. So first we will reduce this and we will check is it enough? If it's not enough we will go to the next one. If we reduce this and now it is less than 175 then we will say okay it's fine. If it's not we will reduce the next one as well. So we will keep reducing until we get to the desired length. So here we are reducing and we will check that if the self dot current length is less than self dot uh, allowed length. If that is the case, we will break. But right now we what we did was we only removed it uh, from the current length. We didn't remove it from our point list and we didn't remove it from our length list because these are the ones that are being used to draw the snake. So it will take all the points even if we have reduced this here. So we need to reduce the points and we need to reduce the lengths as well. So we can simply write here that self self dot uh, lengths dot pop and we will pop at the iteration i. That's it. And we will do the same thing with self dot self dot points dot pop and we will do it in the iteration i. So that's how simple this is. So right now if we run this it should keep reducing the length of the snake uh, as we keep adding. Now it will not be perfect but for us it should be good enough. Okay there's an error list index out of range so cv2 dot circle self dot points minus one okay so we cannot draw all of this if we do not have anything to draw so let's see which line it is so it is this one so what we can do is we can write here if self dot points then do all of this so if you have some points that you want to uh, run then you draw it otherwise it will not be able to so there you go so now you can see the length is consistent so whatever we do it might increase suddenly but it will decrease because we gave it the maximum so if we wanted to if we wanted to we could go up here and we can say the allowed length is let's say 500 so that will be quite huge uh, compared to what we have seen earlier so there you go so now you can see it is much bigger than before so we don't want this to be the starting point because it's quite big so we will keep it at 150 and then we will keep adding to the length of the snake. 
So the next step is to create random food. So we need to generate the food so that we can go and collect and increase the uh, length of the snake. So to do that, first of all, what we need is we need the, uh, what do you call, a location of the food point. So initially it will be zero, zero. And we also need the image of the food. So we will write here self dot image of the food equals cv2 dot im read im read and we are going to read in the path of the food and we will ask the user to input this path of the food because this could be changing so that's why we are putting it here so path of the food and what else then we need to write here cv2 dot uh, im read unchanged underscore unchanged and the reason is because we are importing a png image and we want to remove the the what do you call the pixels on the sides so we want the transparency as well we want the alpha channel so that's why we need to uh, import it like this so once we import it then uh, we are going to get the dimension of the food because we need to know if uh, the snake has hit this location or not so we will write here self dot uh, height of the food and then self dot width dot width of the food and then the last one is the uh, channel the number of channels we don't want that so we'll write here self dot uh, image food dot shape so this shape will give us the height and the width and from there we can know where exactly to uh, create or where exactly is our food item. So we also need the food points. So here we are going to write that self dot food points, food points equals zero zero. So these will be the initialization uh, initial points. But again, we don't want it at zero zero. We want it at a random location. So what we will do is we will create a new function, uh, a new method that will generate new positions for us. So we can write here, uh, random food, food location. So, and this is very simple. All we have to do is we have to write that random dot random int and then we have to give in the range. So this is the range for the X values. So we will give it 100 to 1000 because we have from 0 to 1280. And then for the Y, we are going to copy the same thing. And the range is from 0 to 720. So we will give again 100 to let's say 600. It's up to you if you want to add or remove uh, some values from here. And then we are going to put this as our self dot food point. So this will be um, our new points for the food. So whenever we call this function, it will generate some new location for the food. So initially we do need that. So we will copy this and we will call it once in the initialization function. So if you want to call it, you have to write self dot random food location. So it will declare these food points as zero zero, but then right after that, it will create these random points and it will store that in food point. So right from the beginning, it will be a random value. It will not be zero zero. So once we have that, then we can go down and uh, where we draw the snake, we can then draw the food. After drawing the snake, we can write here, draw food. Let's just give some space. And uh, how do we draw the food? Actually, it's very easy if you're using CV zone. It's very, very easy to do that. Otherwise, uh, if you just want to overlay the image, uh, it will not remove the transparency very easily. You have to write a few lines of code. Uh, if you want to know, I can show you how much of the code is required to do that. Um, overlay PNG. So this is the function. So if you go on that, so uh, this is the amount of code that is required to have the transparency so it's better just to use the code 
uh, just to use the method. So here overlay PNG and then we have to overlay it on our main image and then we have to uh, give in what image do you want to overlay. So we will write here self dot food image food. So this is the image we want. So this is the background image and this is the front image. And then we have to give in the location. So here to make it easier, what we can do is we can write that our Rx, random X and random Y equals um, the self dot, self dot points for the food. So this will give us the Rx and the Ry. Now the problem is we cannot simply write here Rx and Ry. So I will tell you why. So if you just write here Rx and Ry, uh, it is not in the middle, it is at the corner. So we want to overlay the food points in the middle. So to do that, we will get the width. We will write here self dot uh, width of the food divided by two. And then the same thing over here, minus self dot height of the food divided by two. So this will push it back to the center. So that's what we want. So let's run that and see if the food is generated. So we have an error. Uh, we are missing path food. Oh yeah. So here we have to give in the path for the food, which is donut dot png. So where is it? Did it generate? So if we bring in our hand, even. Uh, there is nothing being generated. Why is that? Let's just have a look here. So overlay PNG. Oh, we didn't put it back in our image. So we will have to write here image main equals this. So if you don't put it back, um, it will not display the actual image. So hopefully this time around we'll have a donut in a random location. So each time you run it, it should be in a different location. So you can see here right now it's over the mic. So I have to go from here, there you go. So each time we will have it in a different location. So that is good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to check if the snake ate the food. So if that is the case, then we will generate another random location and it will and we will add to the length. Right. So here, before we draw the food and we draw the snake, here we will write, check if snake ate the food. So we are going to check that. And how do we check that? It's very simple. Uh, again, we need the, the points, the food points. Let's just put it here. So we need the food points and based on these food points, we need to check whether our current uh, index finger is in this uh, square region or circular region. Uh, well, we are using a square region. So uh, not square, rectangular region actually. So what we have to write is basically if our current X is between the Rx and the Rx plus width. So if that is the case, and the current Y is in between the Ry and the Ry plus the height. So if that is the case, then we are going to say that, uh, okay, generate new food. So 
but here uh, we did not declare this W and H and all of this. So what we have to do is uh, again we need to uh, first of all uh, this Rx value is fine. So this is the starting point and then we have to add our width here. So the width basically is self dot uh, width of the food and here it is self dot self dot height of the food self dot height of the food uh, let's write it like that there you go and if that is the case we can just write print uh, hit or let's say eat or eight let's print that so let's run it and see if it works So if we go on that, there you go, it says 8. If we go outside, it doesn't show 8. If we go in, it says 8. Right now, it's not saying 8. Okay, so this is the problem. Yeah, um, so Rx and Ry uh, we, we need to reduce the width divided by 2 here. So we need to write here. Um, this will be plus self width divided by 2. And this will be minus self width divided by 2. So I did that mistake. So this will be minus and this will be plus. And the same thing will go for the y. So this will be plus height divided by 2 and this will be minus height divided by 2 so now it will uh, be in the correct position because it wasn't in the correct position before well, you, you can check this if it's correct or wrong by drawing the rectangle around it so if you draw the rectangle you color it it will be easy to see if it's correct or wrong so right now it's fine at the edge on the sides yeah and if I go out it says nothing so when I go in it says 8 so that is good so now that it ate the food we need to uh, randomly generate new location so now that we know that uh, it is in the correct position we are eating and what we can do is we can simply write that generate a random location so we will write here self dot random location and this will generate a new random uh, location and then we are uh, going to write that the allowed length we are going to increase so the self self dot allowed length uh, we will add to it plus equals 50 so if it was 150 it will become 200 plus 200 it will become 250 and so on and we will also add to our score so we didn't you uh, we didn't write the score yet so we can write here self score equals uh, plus equals one plus equals one and we need to declare this in the beginning so let's just copy this and we will go up here mm, where is it yeah this over here and we can write here score equals zero So whenever it does that, we can print the score. So print score, uh, self dot score. So let's run that and see if it works. So if we go over here, there you go, new generated generated new and you can see the length is increasing as well there you go so each time it adds the length is increasing so that is good so the point system the score system is also working now what we can do is we can check whether uh, we have a collusion or not because pretty much everything else is done 
but the only thing left is the collision. So the collision part is a little bit tricky uh, because it requires um, a little bit of maths. Now, there is an easy way that we are going to approach today. We are going to use that. Now, it's not the best way to do this. There are other ways that you can do this as well. But this is one of the easiest ones and it will do the job. So it will not work in all the methods, in all the scenarios, but it will do a pretty good enough job. So that's why we are going to use this. So what is this method that I'm talking about? So um, here we have done, um, let's just call it appending here. And then we have length reduction, check if snake ate the food. And then we will write here that check for collusion. Check for for collision so how do we check for collision what we will do is all the points that we have we are going to create a polygon out of these points a, po a, a polygon is basically a bunch of points uh, all we are doing is we are creating it into an array and what we will do is uh, we will use the opencv function uh, point polygon test which actually tells us that if one point is landed on one of the uh, polygon points. So this is our diagram. So here we have our main head. So we have to check if this main head, uh, the distance between this point and this point. We will not check uh, the distance between this and the last one because that is just too close. Uh, otherwise it will give us an error. So we will ignore the last two points but the rest of them, we will generate the lengths for each one of them. So you can do this manually or you can use the polygon function that is provided by OpenCV. So that polygon function, it will give you the minimum point, the minimum distance between any of these. So if the minimum distance is this one, it will give you only this one as the output. It will do all the calculations and it will give you this as the output. So that is very easy to do. So how do we do this? Uh, we will write here that our points equals numpy dot array. So now we have to convert it. Uh, this is a little bit of a formality. We have to convert it into numpy array and then we can use the polygon function that is given by OpenCV. Otherwise, we cannot use it. So here we will write that self dot points. And if you remember, I told you that we are not going to use the last two points. We are not going to use the head. We are not going to use the head and we are not going to use the previous head. So these two points we have to remove. So we will say take all the points colon take all the points until minus two. So don't take the last two. This is what this means. And then we want them to be integers of 32 bits. So that's just the format. So that's good. And then we have to do another formality. Uh, this is to convert it into the correct shape before we can give it to our function. So we have to write here uh, points dot reshape and we have to write here minus one, one and two. So this is just reshaping it so that it is compatible with the function. Now, uh, in order to see if we are headed in the right direction or not, what we can do is we can draw these polygon points. So uh, we can write here cv2 dot polylines and we will draw it on our main image and then we will give in our points. We will write here pts and then here it is asking us whether it is closed or not. So it is not closed. It's an open, uh, it's a snake. So it's not closed. Um, so we'll write here false and uh, then we will have to give in the color. So let's give it green, 0, 200. Let's give it 200. 200 and 0. And then the thickness, let's give it 3. So this will draw the polyline. So let's see if this works. Because we converted it, we just need to check whether our conversion is correct or not. Otherwise, we might be checking collusion in the wrong places. So right now it's not showing anything, uh, which is not good. What happened? So check for collusion, cv2 dot polylines, image main points, false. 
0203. Yeah, it seems fine to me. What's the problem? Oh, okay. The problem is we are drawing the snake after that. So we are drawing it above this. So uh, below this. So it, it is overwriting. It is drawing, but it is overwriting. So let's do the checking of the collusion after the drawing. It shouldn't make a big difference. It's fine if you push them up or down. There you go. So now you see that line. So this line is the polygon line. And if our head hits this line, it will give us uh, the detection that it is hit. So we need to write that down. So we need to check that. So how can we check it? It's very simple. It's just one single line of code. We will write here cv2 dot uh, poly. Uh, what was the name? Poly points. No, point poly test. Yes, point polygon test. Uh, we will give in our points and we want to give in the point that we want to test. So these are all the polygons we want to check with. And this is the point we want to check. This is the head point, current X and the current Y. We want to check whether this head is hitting any of these points. If that is true, then it will give us the output. So it is asking us, do you want the measured distance or do you want the output to be just 0, 1 and minus 1? But we want measured distance, so we will write true. So here we will print, um, let's store the value in distance. Uh, let's call it minimum distance. Minimum distance equals this. And we will put it here and let's see what is our minimum distance. So there you go. On the left hand side, you can see the minimum distance. So if I move around, let's just grab a few so it becomes bigger and we can see the difference. There you go. There you go. And then I can hit it a few times. And we can check that over here. So here we can observe that these are our values. And you can see uh, when over here it's almost hit. So 0, 0 0.22, which means it is very close to one of the points. So here it's not hitting. Here we have minus 4. Here we have minus 1. So minus 0 0.9. So again, we might not get exactly 0. So what we have to do is we have to give it a condition whether it is close enough, um, the distance is close enough. So here we are going to write that if our minimum distance, minimum distance is in between minus one and one. So if you want to make it more difficult, the game, you can increase this value. So, and we can write equal to as well, minus one, uh, less than equal to minus one and this. So, yeah, so we can write it like that. And then we can write here, uh, print, uh, let's say hit. So we'll print hit if it hits. So let's run that. So let's move it around a little bit here and there, collected two of them, three of them, four and let's hit it, did it hit, like that, there you go. So now you can see it says hit, 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 hit. So once you hit that, uh, we are going to uh, create a variable, we will call it game over and if that is game over, then we will show a different screen and we will say game over, something like that. So here we can write self self dot game over equals false. 
and um, we can go down and if it hits we can write self dot game over equals true and we also need to reset everything so here all of these we need to reset so we'll copy these and we will paste it here so self dot points length current length allowed length previous head what else uh, maybe even the the position random food location we can change that to we can generate one more time so yeah so when it does game over then in the beginning we have to make sure that it doesn't run all of the code if the game is over so in the very beginning we have to check this condition so we will write if self dot game over then we are going to write uh, we will write some text let's say uh, let's use cv zone cv zone dot put text rect so it will put the text and the rectangle and it will center it automatically so it's a little bit easier uh, rather than writing uh, uh, the code for the rectangle and then writing the code for the text and then trying to center it manually so this will do it all for you so we'll write here image main and then we will write here game over and then we will give in the location let's say 300 and 400 and then uh, you can give in a few more parameters like scale scale is let's say seven and thickness is let's say five and the offsets let's say is 50. now all of these it's up to you let's put it at 20. Uh, this is up to you if you want to add these things or not uh, you can play around with these and uh, you can also show the score so let's copy that and paste it here and here we will write an f string f and then we can write score or let's say your score and then we can write self dot score and let's change the position or should we keep it the same no we cannot keep it the same so your score 300 is the width 400 is the height let's make it for uh, 550 so yeah that should be good and we can also display the score when we, the game is being played so we have draw snake draw food and below that let's just draw here as well and um, we can just write score and for the scale I think it will be too big if we just put seven uh, it will be quite big so let's just put it as three and three and the offset as 10 and the location as 50 and let's say So let's run that and see if it works. There you go. You can see the score is zero. Okay. <laughs> the game saying game over and your score is zero and it keeps regenerating. That's not good. The score is one, zero. One. Why is it showing both of them at the same time? Uh, that is a question. That is a good question. Oh uh, yeah, we didn't write else. My bad. So we have to write if game over. Else. We do all of that. So now it should only work that way and then we also need to do one more thing uh, if we want to reset the game we should have the option to do that so here we can write key equals cv2 weight key and then we can write if our key is basically ORD and let's use the R button for reset if we want to reset or restart we will write here game dot uh, game over equals false so this will reset the game for us.
So let's try that. So here's our finger. We move, we get one, two, three, four, and if we hit, game over. Score is four. And if I press the R button, it starts again. But again, you have to move. If you are still at one point, it will keep collecting those points at the same point and it will detect it as a hit. So right from the start, you have to keep moving. So you keep moving and boom, there you go. There you go. Even if you lose the hand for a little bit, it will start from uh, the same point again. Oh, I hit. So anyways, this is the basic idea of the game. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I think we do not have anything else. You could add, uh, for example, sounds and buttons and animation and all of that, but that is a little bit more complicated. And uh, I recommend you, if you want to do game development with computer vision, do check out our computer vision with game development course. It uh, tells you how to use uh, Pygame and OpenCV together, and it has a lot more functionality uh, and a lot more classes we have created, how to um, change different scenes, how to add animations, how to add sounds, how to add physics, all of this is explained there. So do check, uh, do check that out on our course page. And there's a lot of other courses as well if you like to level up your computer vision skills. So this is it for today. I hope you have learned something new. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you really liked it, share it with your friends. And I will see you in the next one.